this time. All right, so the full moon, um, this full moon is in Taurus and Taurus represents kind of this, this fixed sign, this earthly sign and um, patience, perseverance, even some stubbornness can show up um, in this sign. And right now we're, uh, the sun is in Scorpio, which is a very watery, fluid, kind of intuitive sign. And so this full moon uh, is about bringing those two aspects of ourselves in balance, kind of the more um, structured, uh, earth-oriented part of us, maybe even stubborn, and then the fluid, intuitive part of us just kind of bringing that into a little more balance. So we're going to do a journal prompt. And um, we're going to center first, and then, then I will offer the journal prompt. So go ahead and find a comfortable seat, whatever that looks like for you. And you can either close your eyes or soften your gaze. You can rest one hand over your heart and your other hand over your navel and start to breathe under your hands. So letting your inhale become wide and full. Letting your exhale be a complete, uh, sort of emptying all the air out of your lungs. We'll take two more breaths, breathing in. And exhaling it all out. Once more, inhale. And exhale, let it all go. And then start to breathe in a way that feels full and rounded, but also easy. Not a strenuous breath, but sort of a fluid stream of breath in and out. And then notice yourself here breathing. Can you recall the 30 days, these past 30 days, the, perhaps the feeling, maybe there are a lot of ups and downs or maybe something in particular comes up that is significant in this 30 days. Within these past 30 days, I invite you to land on something that you might wish to let go of. It could be a physical object or it could be a thing, a feeling. It could be a certain circumstance. Allow yourself to arrive to that answer organically. And once you arrive, with that answer, you're welcome to get out your pen and paper and just write a little note, uh, maybe write, I wish to let go of, and then fill that rest of that sentence out. And if nothing is coming to mind, here, I'm going to admit one more person into the room. And so we just did our journal prompt for the full moon. We reflect, um, Trish, and I believe you're here, uh, just to let you know we are... Just connecting to one thing we wish to let go of from this past 30 day cycle. And we wrote it down. And now we're going to check back in with ourselves and you could either close your eyes, soften your gaze, take a few deep breaths. And so now using a bit of imagination, imagine you could see out into the future this next 30 day cycle. What might you wish to bring into this next cycle? So we let go of one thing, so that made space for a new thing. 
what would be for your highest and best good to bring in to this new cycle? It could be an object, it could be a circumstance, it could be a feeling. Whatever it is that you organically arise to, just trust that. Trust that that is showing up for a reason. And once you decide on that answer, you can write down in your journal, I wish what, what I wish to bring in for the next 30 days and then fill that in. And once you arrive um, with those answers, and we will get into the practice, I promise, but I do want to mention one more thing about this full moon. So technically the full moon is actually in two days, but we're still feeling the energy of this uh, full moon. Um, it, it's falling um, during a lunar eclipse, which is kind of a big deal. Um, it means that the There'll be many, the full cycle of the moon will happen within a short period of time. And it can be very emotionally stirring. So this is gonna be a very unique moon. It's actually during the election, which, okay. And um, and so sometimes that can be negative, like, oh, it's gonna be very emotional. And, and sometimes that can be taken kind of in a negative way, but think of it as it's so emotionally stirring it can be a very powerful time to kind of reach into what we might be put, pushing down below the surface. It can come up, right? So look at it like that. So if in our practice tonight, um, some emotions arise, you know, I like to blame it on the, the full moon lunar eclipse. And then one last thing, I do pull an Oracle card um, for every full moon class. And I happen to get a card that says, see your emotions as teachers. Emotions can be vehicles for transformation, whether jo joyous or challenging, they can teach you how to overcome fear and cultivate compassion. So we'll go ahead and start our practice. Go ahead and arrive on your mat if you're not there already. It's okay. And we're gonna start we're going to start with just a very simple seated, um, some seated work here. I'm just kind of stirring some energy up. We're going to take our hands to our shins and then round your back, chin to chest as you exhale. And as you inhale, pull back on your shins with the heart. And we're going to do this a few times. Exhale around. Inhale, lifting the chest and the heart. Exhale round. And inhale, lift. And then the next time you come forward, we can move into a more dynamic movement, more of a circular movement. Hands to your knees. You're gonna lean to one side and then circle your chest to the front of the room, lean to the other side, and then round your spine to the back of the room. And we'll continue to stir in this circular motion, our spine around our pelvis. Breaking up any sort of stagnant energy here. And we'll take one more circle this way and then you'll Change directions, circling in the opposite direction. And you might have your journal just near your mat. And if any inside or anything shows up in addition, like something else you want to bring into this new cycle or something else you wish to let go of, that might show up throughout your practice and you might want to jot it down um, ever, every now and then. All right, we're gonna come up and we're gonna focus a little bit on the throat chakra today. Taurus um, has, is tied in with the neck and the throat chakra. So we will uh, focus on that neck. So let's come on to our belly. And you'll be on your belly and on your elbows. And we're going to tuck all 10 toes under and just start to 
crawl the thigh bones just a little further back on the mat. Like we're inching our legs a bit longer and longer. And then you'll untuck your toes and press your forearms down into the floor. Start to lift your head and chest up. Now you're welcome to stay here with your elbows, just a touch in front of your shoulder line. But if this feels like it's irritating your low back, you can crawl your elbows even more forward. Now the arms are active. They're pressing down. The base of the skull is lengthening up but the belly is soft, connecting to the belly of the earth. The legs are heavy, the glutes are relaxed. Feet are relaxed. You're welcome to stay here steady, or you can start to do a little neck stretch. So uh, that will involve looking back to that right shoulder, drawing the chin down to the chest and then over to the opposite shoulder and then retracing your steps. And just going at a steady pace. When you've done an even amount, we'll just bring the head over the spine and stay here for about 10 more breaths. Go ahead and widen our elbows, lower all the way down to our belly and pause. You can stack your hands under your head. If you would like to release a little bit of low back tension here, you can bend your knees and windshield wiper your feet right and left. And then we'll make our way up to hands and knees. Now, if you do need to pad your knees with a blanket, go ahead and do that. We are going to come into a version of child's pose. So for child's pose, we're gonna do a wide knee version today. Take your knees about as wide as your mat, big toes touch, and sit your hips back to your heels. And then you can start to crawl your hands forward, but we're actually gonna offset. We're gonna come into a side bend. So you're gonna crawl your hands slightly off your mat to the right. And then before you lay all the way down, we're going to take the uh, right arm, bend the elbow, and rest your forehead on your forearm. Left arm is still nice and long, but a little bit disengaged, a little bit relaxed. You wanna cook some breath into that left side. Now, if you need to prop yourself, say um, your hips are up in the air, you can't quite sit on your heels, you can take some sort of prop between your glutes and your heels. So we're going to be here for a few moments. So do take time to prop yourself if you need that. We're going to coax more space, more breath into that left rib cage here.
we'll be here for 10 more breaths. How much more can you melt your body into this shape? What can soften? What can let go in the body? Disengage. I mean, what I love about yin is you're practicing letting go in your body, and that can that can make it easier to let go in other ways. We'll crawl ourselves back to center. And then I would recommend coming up for a moment before we go straight away to the other side. I like to extend one leg long um, just to straighten the leg before we go back to rebending. Because it can be a lot of uh, pressure on the joints. And then when you're ready to go back to it, we're going to take our knees again wide, big toes touch. You're going to crawl your hands over to the left, slightly off your mat. Keep your right arm long, but then bend your left elbow. Rest your forehead on your forearm. And feel this link through your right side, from your right outer hip all the way up through your right arm to the fingertips. And if the mind feels busy or active tonight, I invite you to focus on your breath, noticing each inhale and exhale. You can also notice whatever sensations are showing up in this pose. Maybe you're feeling that long side body stretch through your right. Give that sensation your undivided attention. We'll slowly travel ourselves back and press ourselves up. If you want to move your spine around, maybe side to side or a little cat cow, you can. Um, but we will make our way to seated next. And I recommend if you're the type, if you're feeling tight in your hips today and when you sit, you feel like you're rolling back, it's hard to sit up tall here. I recommend sitting on a prop. That's gonna help you sit up extra tall. So I'm just gonna grab a blanket just to show you that. We're gonna come into shoelace pose. So we'll take our legs out in front of us and we'll cross our right leg on top of the left. So you're gonna bend your right knee, stack it on top of your left, but then you're also going to bend your bottom leg as well. You can lean to one side and bend. Now, if you get here and there is knee discomfort, 
you can keep your bottom line straight instead. So that's the alternative. Otherwise, we'll be here. Now notice your two sitting bones. We want them as even as possible. So most likely your right sitting bone is kind of lifted up. So can you pick up your hips and kind of slide them over to the right just a little bit more? Maybe that right sitting bone comes down. And so we're gonna pause right where we are and notice how we feel in the stretch. So we wanna feel the right amount of sensation. We want not the strongest, not nothing, but we want something kind of Goldilocks amount of stretch, medium. So if you're feeling a lot already and you're sitting upright, I would add more props under the sitting bones. That'll make it easier to stay in this pose for longer. We're gonna be here for a couple of minutes. If you're here and you're like, tell me what's next, we're going to start to just gently lean forward over our legs. That'll get into the outer hip a little bit more. Then you're welcome to go any amount forward you choose within reason. So we want to feel like we can relax here. We can breathe into this pose. We're not too far into it that we have to brace ourselves. So you can also certainly use a prop under your arms or, um, you know, on your lap, if that makes sense for you. Really anything will work as a prop. So we'll just hang out here and see what can soften. So especially the upper body, the face muscles, can you let some of that soften your forehead, part your back teeth. Let your shoulders soften and widen. Imagine your bones are heavy and everything is relaxing. The tissue, the muscle, they're all relaxing away from the bone. At any point you feel a little stressed out here or like you want to jump out of your skin, just ease out of the pose slightly and deepen your breath. It's normal to feel a certain amount of discomfort in these poses. We're stretching less elastic tissues that may not always get stretched regularly. So it can feel a little confronting at times, but We'll just continue to breathe, lean into that little bit of discomfort. going to come up and do a slight variation. So we're staying in the shoelace pose with the right leg is on top, which means we're going to twist to the right side of the room. So you'll take your right fingertips behind you on the floor. Your left hand can just simply hold your knee and you're just simply going to kind of coax your spine into a little bit of that spinal twist, letting your navel wrap to the right, maybe gazing towards the back wall. Thinking of your spine as this barbershop pole spiraling up to the ceiling. Letting your breath become full and expansive, letting your belly inflate as you inhale. And as you exhale, let your navel draw back towards your spine gently. 
So it's like a little abdominal massage. Inhale, belly is wide and full. Exhale, navel draws back towards your spine. One more time. We'll unwind, move whatever props you want out of the way, and we'll extend both legs long. Before we go into the other side, we're gonna take another yin pose. It'll be a kind of a neutral, uh, neutralizing pose. So sitting up nice and tall, I'm gonna turn to this side. We're gonna let our feet be roughly hip width apart and then let them just kind of splay open and then pick up your waist as you push into the floor, inhale. And as you exhale, start to drift yourself into a forward fold. Any amount, we'll be here for about 30 seconds, not your longest pose, but just long enough to release the back, release the hamstrings, maybe you let your head drop down. See if you can coax some breath into the back of your ribs. Gradually, you'll press into your hands, round through your spine, stacking your vertebrae up. And we'll go about the second side, uh, shoelace pose again. All right, so this time we're going to have our left leg on top. So you can bend both knees with the left on top. You can also straighten your bottom leg if that better serves your knee. And then we're going to pick up our pelvis and move it slightly to your left, just to ground that left sitting bone a little bit more. I like to kind of pull my feet back here and then check in on this side. Maybe it feels really comfortable to sit up and maybe you wanna stay here. Ask yourself, would I wanna be here for two minutes? And then if you feel like you could take on a little more sensation, maybe play with tipping forward a little bit leaning into the wind, maybe allowing um, yourself to come into a deeper fold here. And having discernment, knowing when it's appropriate to back off. So when it feels a little dicey or a little bit triggering, just let that be a cue to lighten this a little bit. We'll be here for 10 more breaths. Maybe you want to go a little deeper for this final few moments, or maybe you're good right where you are. What can let go more in these last 10 breaths?
we'll gradually make our way up, but we're staying in shoelace pose. We're going to do a spinal twist now to the left. Left hand behind you on the floor, right hand can hold that top knee, and you can just kind of push gently, twisting to the left, letting that navel wrap to the left, maybe gazing at the back wall. Just allowing some length, some space in your spine. Breathing down into your belly, let it inflate as you inhale. Exhale, draw your navel back towards your spine. Continue that, inhale, belly inflates. Exhale, navel to spine. And we'll unwind, come back to center. We're gonna do a new forward fold, a little bit different, previous. So you'll unwind your legs. Then we're gonna do a wide-legged uh, version now. So wide, but never your widest wide. So we're not trying to do middle splits. We wanna back off for anything too extreme. A little wide, um, wider than your hips. Kind of like your legs are making a 90 degree angle uh, wide. And then just like before, you're gonna let your feet kind of relax open. And then you'll shift to the front of your sitting bones and you'll just take a moment to fold in. Now we are gonna hold this pose a bit longer. So you might employ some props. If you have something like books or those blankets or blocks in this case, you'll start to round your spine down, head heavy. We wanna feel a stretch behind the back of the leg. And that might be exclusively what you feel. You also might feel a stretch in your back, maybe even a stretch in the back of the neck if you let your head completely go. What I like to do if I have a very tight neck in this, I'll put my elbows on props and then I'll hold my cheeks and my hands so that'll ease some of the intensity of just letting your head go completely to the floor. We'll slowly start to pick ourselves up, curling through the spine, stacking one vertebrae on top of the next, setting whatever props you might have in front of you off to the side. You're welcome to use your hands as helpers to bend your knees. I like to take my feet a little wide and hands back and just take a little windshield wiper moment here, letting the, the Thigh bones kind of move in the hip sockets. We're going to be moving on to pigeon pose. In yin yoga, it's known as sleeping swan. I do recommend a prop if you have one, like um, specifically something to rest your torso on. But if you happen to know this next pose does not work for your knees, I'm gonna show you recline pigeon as an alternative. So recline pigeon, 
looks like lying on your back and crossing your right ankle on top of your left thigh and then interlacing your fingers behind the thigh. Now you could do the same pose against the wall so you don't have to use your hands. And this will be your version. So there's no pressure on the knees. Otherwise, if you're okay um, to do sleeping swan, you're gonna come up to kneeling, you'll follow me. I like to take a blanket under my knees for this. And then I like to have a prop uh, at the end of my mat. And this is a good one if you have like a big bulky pillow or bolster. And then from hands and knees, you're gonna slide your right knee behind your right wrist and sweep your right foot across your mat. So your shin will make this sort of diagonal shape. It's not necessary to make your shin parallel to the end of the mat. That's a little too rigid for where we're going. And then curl your back toes under, start to crawl that back leg all the way to the back of your mat. And then once it gets all the way back, untuck your toes. And then from here, you can kind of puff up your pigeon, push into your fingertips, lengthen the sides of your waist, pull your belly up and in, get a little bit of yang, a little bit of that active engagement first. Take a deep breath in. And then as you exhale, we're gonna to start to kind of fold in. So you can be on your elbows, you can take a prop under your chest or your ribs. We're gonna just hang out here for a few, quite a few breaths. And this is the kind of pose that is a bit more intense. And so if you need to come out early, you can. Otherwise, you're going to be here for another minute. Take our final breath here, inhale fully. And then as you exhale, you'll make your way out of your pose however you like. Uh, most like to lie on their back, but you can lie on your belly or sit up, whatever you need to do to just simply pause and notice, notice the after effects. Notice the energy rush down your right leg. Maybe you feel energy move out through the sole of your right foot. Taking one more breath here to observe. And then if you're lying on your back, gather your knees into your chest and roll to the side. We'll come up and do the second side. So finding that tabletop position again. This time taking your left knee behind your left wrist. Sweeping the left foot across your mat and then crawling your back toes way far to the back of the mat, as far as you can get it. 
and then untuck those toes. We're going to press up onto our fingertips alongside our hips, lift up nice and tall, take a deep breath in. And then as you exhale, start to fold. Allow yourself to kind of melt into this. Maybe you take and that prop again under your ribs or under your chest, making sure your shoulders are relaxed, they aren't overworking here. We'll be here a little bit longer. So see if you can soften or maybe readjust your body in a way where you're letting go of even more effort being here. You wanna let everything soften to the floor. Like we're a puddle and we're just heavy against the earth. We'll be here for 10 more breaths. Let's take a deep breath in. As you exhale, let that initiate you, making your way out and however you want to pause and take in uh, what you notice. As you lie down or lie on your belly, check in with that left leg, feel the qualities. Maybe there's a sort of a line of energy moving down your leg, out through the sole of your foot, or maybe a buzzing or tingling sensation, whatever you notice, just attune to its presence. And we'll bend our knees, gather them into the chest if you're on your back. And just kind of rock across the back of the hips. Roll over to the side and make our way up to a seat. We'll do one little, just a little seated thing here before we lie back down. So we're really going to get into a little more of the sides of the lungs. So from a cross-legged seat, you'll take your right arm and reach it across and then cup your left kneecap. And then the, the left hand is going to just kind of hover or rest at your left ear like you're holding up a telephone. Now we're not actually going to push on our head. We're just kind of having the hand along for the right here. Okay? So sit up nice and tall. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, we're gonna start our side bend, letting the right shoulder drop to the right thigh, and then point that elbow, the left elbow straight up to the ceiling. So you're really getting into this whole left side here. 
Press your knee into your hand as you rise up. Big breath in. Exhale, side bend again, maybe a little deeper this time. And remember, we're not actually pushing on our head with that hand. Inhale, rise back up. We'll do one more of these. And exhale, side bend. This time we'll linger here for a moment, breathing into that left side like you could spread apart one rib away from the next. And then let your inhale bring you up. Now we're going to take that left hand across to the opposite knee, draw the chin into the chest, round the back. Let that back of the heart expand and open. And then release all of that, sit up nice and tall. Change the cross of your leg so the other leg is on top. We'll do the other side. Left arm is going to reach across, cup that knee. Right hand to right ear, elbow wide. Sitting up as tall as you can here. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, letting that left shoulder dip down to that left leg. Press your knee into your palm to help you rise up. Inhale. Exhale, side bend. Maybe a little deeper this time. Getting a little further into that side stretch. And then inhale, float up. On this last time, you'll stay in it and we'll breathe, breathe into that side, that right lung. You're separating each rib away from the next by way of your inhale. Take an inhale here, exhale, lift up. We're gonna go ahead and transition onto our back. So we're gonna stay on our back. So you might wanna take something under your head, like a blanket or a pillow. We're gonna float our feet in the air for just a very brief little waterfall pose moment. You're welcome to take your hands under your hips or maybe a prop under your hips. You can point and flex your feet, circle your ankles about. You can even shake your legs if that feels interesting. But sometimes stillness is all you need here. We'll be here for about 10 breaths. Take a deep breath in, exhale, let all the air out, let your knees fall into your chest and you can rock. We're gonna make our way into our final pose, Shavasana. You can take your legs long, arms long, of course, but if this makes your low back feel sensitive, you can instead bend your knees and separate your feet as wide as your mat. Knees touch in the center and this can be a great uh, kind of restorative posture for your low back. Regardless, gather your shoulder blades together behind your heart. Get comfortable. So doing anything you need to, to get 5%, 10% more comfortable here. Take time to do that. And then we'll rest here for just a few moments. Shavasana.
begin to deepen your breath. Allow your inhales and exhales to return you back into this room, back into your body from wherever you drifted. You can start to wiggle the fingers and toes, move your wrist and ankles. Maybe you take that full body stretch, get really long on your mat, initiate a yawn. Eventually, you'll bend your knees and make your way up to a seat. And as you sit, we're going to close our practice today by chanting Om three times. And everyone's muted, I believe. So you can also chant silently, um, just kind of stimulating that throat chakra again, honoring that Taurus full moon. Um, so I'm going to find our seat. Bring your palms together at your heart. I invite you to rub your palms together, generating some warmth between your hands. Building on that heat, getting more and more of that energy. And then take your thumb tips to your sternum. We'll take a full breath, followed by three ohms. Inhale fully, exhale fully. Inhale for ohm. Oh We'll bow the thinking mind to the caring heart. May your practice lead you home. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. All right, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, the full moon, I recommend just kind of using your yoga to ground yourself um, during this time never hurts to be more grounded. Um, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and hit unrecord.